Hi friends, so we are continuing our congenital series in which we are discussing the problem which are present at the time of birth in either muscles or in the bones. So that causes a problem, functional problem, how to use that part. So it's about congenital subluxation of wrist which is known as the mad lung deformity. So basically mad lung deformity is a problem in which there is problem in the lower end of radius. So there are two parts, it is the outermost part and this is the inner part. So if there is disturbance in the inner third part of the radius bond, distal and radius, the growth cartilage is stunted. So that causes overgrowth of this outermost part towards the thumb side. So the radius shaft this bond will board backwards and the interosseous space between this ulna bond and radius bond will increase and this ulna bone will overgrow more than this radius side and it will subluxate backwardly. So there are various other problems as well when the anatomy is disturbed between the radius and ulna and the wrist joint which is there. So distal end of the radius is affected. So there will be abnormal soft tissue growth between distal and radius ulna and the carpus bone. There will be abnormal insertion of the pronator quadratus muscle which is normally present there but the bone shape or anatomy is disturbed so the uh, uh, this pronator quadratus insertion is disturbed. Also there are various other ligament which is present over that area will be abnormal hypertrophy like the radiolunate ligament and the radiotriquitral ligament. Normally we see that this deformity is present in both hand. So that is the reason why this deformity has been just very late in the course of disease in adolescent age that we, we can see the deformity is there because normally we see that this is there in both of the hands. So we consider that this could be the normal thing but expert I can diagnose this deformity very earlier and the late presentation is quite common. It is more common in the female patient and you can see that uh, this part of the ulna is enlarged so and abnormal abnormally curvature so that causes impaction when once you are doing the ulnar uh, movement the ulnar uh, this wrist movement the size of the wrist is enlarged this particular uh, dorsiflexion movement is decreased also during the late uh, course of disease the pronation and supination movement are also decreased so there are various uh, uh, you know possibilities of uh, disease like many of the cases are idiopathic the causes are not known in many of the condition the genetic causes there many of the syndromes the syndromes are the uh, conditions which are having various uh, you know problems in a person like there are syndromes of Turner syndrome echondroplasia stretcher people or the oleous disease the Larryville syndrome these are the syndromes so this, these are the genetic condition it can be because of the post-traumatic situation, the post-traumatic uh, like somebody is having a injury in early uh, age. So that causes a disturbance in the distal and radial epiphysis and that causes this problem. Various dysplastic causes in which the dysplasia uh, you know, causes such deformity. So uh, once you are going for the x-ray, the problem is you see the x-ray will show the lunate bone which is uh, uncovered it is not covered you will see the distal and radius uh, there are different abnormal you know anatomy will see that uh, the space between the distal and radius and ulna is increased distal and radius epiphysis will look like a triangular shape epiphysis the ulnar slope very steep in the distal and radius and the ulnar border you know this border this side border of the distal and radius is very uh, you know deficient so what happens if it is uh, diagnosed quite early and in those cases we apply a dorsiflexion full arm cast and we'll see that how the deformity will remain if it is quite functional there is no problem in the function of a patient then it is accepted well accepted but if the problem is very comes with uh, acute pain and with lot of deformity so in different time different sort of surgeries are uh, advocated like epiphysiolysis in which uh, we remove the you know abnormal volar part and ulnar physial region and we remove abnormal teethering of the soft tissue and excise those anatomical structures which are teethering and we cut the ulnar and volar part of the physial segment 
that abnormal Pfizer segment and we put some fat inter, uh, in, interposed in that uh, in a void area. Second possibility is epiphysiodesis. The first part is the lysis of the epiphysis. We are removing that and second part we are fusing that part. So either the ulnar part or the radial part is epiphysiodesis is done, the fusion is done. So the movement will be very less. If the cases are coming to us quite late, then the options are osteotomy of the part like the deformity is already full fledged and now we are having the options of osteotomy like the dome osteotomy the dorsal or volar osteotomy of the bone in very late cases where the ulnar impaction is you know quite significant the main problem is not deformity but the ulnar impaction then there's option of suave copangi sort of surgeries like the ulnar shortening procedures so this is about the mad lung deformity in which there's problem in the wrist joint and there's problem in the movement in the wrist joint and the supination pronation and the deformity is increasing more common in the female. So this is about our congenital series and mad lung deformity. Please like and subscribe. Life care. Thank you.